Since 1985, Continuum has had the tremendous fortune to explore new ideas in music into Toronto, where the trees meet the water. Toronto is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island and has been a site of human activity for more than 15,000 years. We recognize that we are here because this land was colonized. Indigenous communities and allies struggle against the ongoing consequences of our colonial system. This land is the territory of the Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We are enormously grateful for the generosity of all Indigenous people who share this land with us and allow us to live and work here as uninvited guests. Welcome to Continuum's 18th episode of Press Play, our web series that dives deep into extraordinary works of contemporary music in both their performance and in informative conversations with the artists who create the work. My name is Joyce To, and I'm the host of Press Play. Please make welcome Anna Hersman. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for joining me. Really excited to have you. Yeah. Uh, let's get right into it. I have a general question about Hasekul to start with, since we will be seeing three Hasekul performances throughout uh, this season. Uh, how do you approach writing for Hasekul and do you approach it differently to when you write, for example, for piano? I do. Um, I have learned a great deal from Wesley over the course of these last three pieces um, that he has commissioned from me, uh, which I'm very, I feel very blessed to have worked with Wesley, um, partially because he knows my sound world uh, already, and so he has a very nuanced way of um, being able to intuit what it is that I am reaching for in my pieces. Um, and he's been very generous to um, work with me along the way um, in, in trying to kind of uh, bring, the, bring details of those pieces into uh, a more musical expression. So it's been uh, very, I've learned a lot from Wesley along the way. And originally writing for harpsichord, I didn't really have a very, um, I just didn't really know a lot of contemporary uh, solo repertoire for harpsichord. I have to admit, I was quite unimaginative. Um, I, I knew Ligeti's solo harpsichord piece continuum, and then much of my impression of the harpsichord was, you know, really quite old music. Um, and so it, it was quite a journey to, you know, work on my own pieces and approach the harpsichord first very much as a pianist. Um, and then my understanding of the instrument grew over time, and so then I could start to actually treat it very differently than the piano, which it is uh, very different from the piano. So very thrush. It's a world mm -hmm. premiere. Mm -hmm. First, first seen, first heard here at Continuum on Press Play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and very thrush. I I read that you were really inspired by uh, tangles of forest undergrowth uh, and just the way the, the forests just so intricately connect with each other. And I really do hear, hear that interconnectedness, that, that idea of interconnectedness when I listen to this uh, work. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm wondering what, what life experiences culminated into the conception of this of this work? Um, so, um, we really wanted there to be a third harpsichord piece, Wesley and I both, and so we decided um, that it would be really lovely it, that if this were to happen. And so, um, so I wrote it this last summer, two thousand twenty one. Um, and um, uh, I guess, it, you know, it, I don't know if you've been to the West Coast. Uh, the forests here are unlike um, maybe other parts of Canada in that um, they're, 
really dense um, in places and there's they're very mossy um, there's a lot of undergrowth there's a lot of um, different kinds of low growth um, and then there's these huge huge trees some old growth still but huge fir um, arbutus cedar uh, douglas fir just a kind of an incredible ecosystem mushrooms uh, berries there's a lot of bird song <laughs> there's a lot of activity <laughs> so you know being being out uh, and walking is is a real experience where you're just constantly um, alerted to this all this life going on around you and and especially all of this music like all of the all of these different uh, birds and I like to imagine the insects, you know, they all have a song. They all, they are all making sound like all the time, constantly making sound, going over doing this, going over doing that, chattering about this, talking to their, you know, just noticing things like they're just constantly talking. They're in dialogue. And um, so that was kind of the idea behind this piece was that I was just really, it's just a reverie basically on, on, on this sort of density and the tangledness of the forest. Um, and all of the, all the sound that's going on, and um, I wish that I, I wish that I could you know have even created more of a density um, in the piece itself. Um, because but but I think um, this piece comes very close to a kind of uh, almost like a, a dance in a way. It has a kind of dance like quality, and so yeah. So it's just a reverie on on the forest, really. I love that. I really love that. Oh, the birds and the insects and the subterranean. Oh, I really love that. Thank you so much.
Thank you for watching episode 18 of Press Play. Thank you to Wesley Shen for the stunning performance. And thank you, Anna, for sharing space with me. The next episode of Press Play broadcasts Thursday, January 6th at 7 p.m. with Battle of Manassas by Thomas Wiggins, performed by Gregory O on piano. Visit our website, www.continuummusic.ca, to learn more about all our upcoming Press Play episodes and other projects, to follow us on social media, and to sign up on our email list. And if you like what we are doing, click the support button and make a donation now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.